I tried to read as much as possible in October since I knew I would have a lot less time for reading in November. Finally finished going through a very short introduction to crystallography by A.M. Glazer. I've had this book for a few years now and um, admittedly much of the latter half of it is pretty far over my head. Um, I don't have a lot of background in math or chemistry or anything like that, but this did help me um, understand the basics, at least, or sort of get the general idea about crystallography, which is all I was really after. And I really enjoy these very short introductions. I have a few of them on different subjects, and I think they really are a good starting point, especially if someone doesn't have a lot of time to devote to a particular subject. And there is a great reading list at the end of each of these, um, which might actually be the best part of it. Finally got through the summer issue of the Paris Review. I really enjoyed the um, art of fiction interview with Gugi Wa Tiango since I recently picked up a book by him. Um, and the other interview with Sigrid Nunes is also very good. I've never heard of her, but uh, she sounds like a very interesting writer. And the interviews are the main reason I subscribe to the Paris Review. Um, so as long as I enjoy those, I don't consider the experience to be a loss. But in terms of the, the poetry and the fiction that they publish, it's just not as much my thing. And... Um, They aren't bad pieces, but I usually can never remember anything other than the interviews from these. Rush Home Road by Laurie Lansons. My mother lent me this book a few years ago. She said it was really good. Um, and when I first tried to read this, I did not like it. Um, it is about an old black woman who ends up taking care of a young biracial child who has more or less been abandoned by her mother. And what was off-putting to me at first is that some of the language the old woman used to describe herself um i don't know something about it made me uncomfortable especially since the author is white but uh i've been trying to get through the books that i've borrowed from people at least make some progress on that particular stack so i gave this another shot and i did enjoy the story I do think it was well written, and it was quite a heartwarming story. Um, I, I was still left with a little lingering discomfort or almost a confusion about... I don't know. I don't know if, if that's really how someone in that community would really talk about their life. I, I don't know. But I did end up enjoying this book more than I thought I would. That Pup by Alice Parker Butler. I got this from the free table at my apartment building. 
and there were a lot of books at the time. I grabbed this just kind of out of curiosity since it's so old looking. Um, I can't remember when this was published. 1908. Um, this is about a dog that someone unwittingly acquires and apparently it's a, a terrible dog. It's big, ugly, uh, gets in trouble and the owner can't get rid of it. So different people in the neighborhood have different ideas about how to get rid of the dog and all of those ideas mainly involve trying to scare it away with gunfire so that's too bad the writing style is kind of funny um this is just going to go back on the the table where i picked it up from The Hermit Thrush Sings by Susan Butler. I borrowed this from my sister a while ago. I almost stopped reading this at first. I didn't think I was going to like it very much, but after a couple of pages I realized that it was set in a distant future Earth after some sort of global catastrophe and that was enough to keep my interest there are isolated communities that um are kind of feudalistic in organization and the people are not allowed to travel between cities uh they're kept in in the cities or the towns by threats of these wild animals that live in the woods. And this girl, the main character, she... To avoid um, a bad situation in her community, she ran away and met up with some of these wild animals that apparently are not as aggressive as the authorities made them seem. So she was able to travel to another community. And the the overall story I thought was good. The, the premise was kind of interesting, but it relied a lot on this girl having some sort of somewhat magical abilities that seemed to be related to um, a deformity of one of her hands and that part didn't work for me as much because it seemed to me there was a, a non-magical way to make that work that would have made more sense but this was apparently the writer's first novel um and overall, it, it was pretty interesting. Follow the Rabbit Proof Fence by Doris Pilkington and Nugi Garimara. My sister lent me this as well. This tells the true story of three um, Aboriginal girls running away from a government school in Australia and making their way thousands of oh, uh, kilometers, I suppose, um, back to their home. And this was all based on um, one, of, one of the writers is re related to these people, and the book is based on his interviews with them and things like that. So... Really, most of this book was not about their journey, but kind of um, building up the the social situation uh, to put it in context, which was very interesting. I haven't read many books about 
Australia. Um, so this was short, but informative. Spider by Patrick McGrath. I got this at a library sale a few years ago. The cover intrigued me, and it is apparently a small classic of horror. I don't read a lot of horror, so I kind of want to know what, um, how it could be a classic that I never heard of, or what made it notable, I guess. And at first I could not wrap my head around the story. Spider is the name of the narrator, and he seemed to be living in a very strange place, so I couldn't tell if it was supposed to be set in reality or, um, or what, and it turns out that Spider is very mentally disturbed. The story is mostly about him processing the fact of his mother's death, and it is... The writing was so interesting. It, it was so good, and the story is so, so sad, and, um, I can't even describe it, but, um, this is definitely a case of an unreliable narrator, and the way all of it unfolded so... Um, in such a particular manner. It, it was fascinating. And I've never heard of the author, but I'll definitely keep an eye out for other works by him. Cover Me Queer is an art book of sort of fake romance novel covers. And there's a little... Um, a little synopsis of what the story is about for each of them. Some of these, I really wish that they were real books so I could read them, but this um, is overall a very fun little book by a local publisher, so I was happy to support them by acquiring that. Fence, Volume 1 by C.S. Cat, Johanna the Mad, and Joanna La Fuente. Um, this is about the fencing rivalries at a boarding school. I thought it would be interesting since it was about fencing, and I know a lot of people have liked this series. It was pretty good. The art was fun, the characters were fun, um, and this first volume does not get very far into the story, of course. So I am very interested in what will happen next, but I don't know if I'm interested enough to actively seek out the rest of the series, uh, so we'll see. Shades of Fear. This is a really cool horror comic anthology. And I think the main um, the focus, really, of all these stories is on the use of color in horror, which I thought was really cool. And there were a lot of <laughs> strange and unsettling ones in here. There was also one that I thought was pretty funny about a sort of haunted karaoke machine uh, and the art, and that one was wild. So that one was probably the most memorable to me. I got this through the Kickstarter campaign. It arrived a few months ago, I think, and I was saving it for October uh, for obvious reasons. This was really good, really entertaining. And I think it's a really cool part of my collection. The 
The Amber Door is a little sort of fantasy anthology. These stories were all two or three pages. Uh, I mostly got it because I really like Amalos Rosa, the cover artist. I like her work. Um, but this was just kind of neat. There's also some concept art in the back. I always love that. Planetary Volume 1. It's by Warren Ellis. I think I put this on my wish list after reading um, The Tree or Trees by Warren Ellis. And I don't really know if this is my thing. It's kind of superhero-y. Um, this was pretty interesting. There's aliens in it. But I don't think I'm going to get a hold of volume two or however many volumes there might be in the story. I, I'm a little curious what happens next, but... Uh, you know... Cult of Dracula, book one. I got this from a Kickstarter campaign, not really knowing anything about it. And it turns out to be a sort of modern reimagining of Dracula in uh, the form of a cult. And I do kind of wish I'd gotten the collected edition because... Even knowing the story of Dracula, I'm not sure where this is going, and I would like to know. So I'll have to see if I can get the other issues. Eat My Flesh, Drink My Blood by Frankie White and um, Adam Markowitz. This I, I got, um, based on the art, I thought it'd be cool. This is a pretty disturbing and graphic horror story um, about mm, cannibalism and immortality, I guess. The art was cool. Um, not sure how I feel about the story. I finally read Clementine, book one, by Tilly Walden. This was just a coincidence that I ended up reading it in October. Um, I really just wanted to wait until I was in the right mood for it. And I was a little unsure if I would like it because I had seen some early reviews where people complained that the art was too dark or whatever. Um, but it's The Walking Dead, so... Not sure what they were expecting. I really loved this. I thought the story was great. I loved getting to spend more time with Clementine. I thought the art was wonderful. It is on the dark side, but it it fit the story. And Tilly Walden, her style is so detailed. Um, I love this, and... I'm devastated over the fate of one of the characters. So I really cannot wait for book two. I'm not sure when that's coming out. Sometime in 2023. But this was great and worth waiting to read, in my opinion. Dead Collections by Isaac Fellman. This is about a vampire who works in an archive. In this world, vampirism is a disease and people who suffer from it go to public clinics to get transfusions. So I thought that was an interesting take. Um, but the story really kind of centers around um, the problem of decay in archives. And in this universe, 
it the presence of vampires can accelerate that so um that was really interesting that really i think kind of elevated the the whole vampire thing in this um and overall i was definitely the audience for this book I can't even describe, uh, to my surprise, this book really meant a lot to me to read, and I'm very eager to read more by this author. The Four Profound Weaves by R.B. Lemberg. This was the last novel I read in October. I guess it's technically a novella, though. I don't really appreciate the distinction between novel, novella, novelette, long short story. It all seems really arbitrary to me, and so it's kind of annoying. But I have been looking forward to this. I bought this book before I'd read anything by R.B. Lemberg because... Um, it's LGBTQ fantasy, and then I was hearing a lot about it. And I prepared for this book by reading all of R.B. Lumberg's stories that were available online. I really loved most of their stories, and most of which are set in the same world as The Four Profound Leaves. Um, those stories have actually recently been collected, and that collection will be coming out at the end of November and I'm really looking forward to that. So I had kind of high hopes for this book, but I didn't really like it, unfortunately. For one thing, and maybe this is the main thing, really, it was way too long. There were many times when it seemed like the author was just repeating things over and over to fill space, to make it be a certain length, and it seems like there had to have been a more interesting way to add length. Well, I mean, why not go into more depth instead of just saying the same thing over and over again? Like, the characters would say the same things to each other over and over, and they would think the same things to themselves over and over, and certain sections it was almost like they were copy and pasted just from one chapter to another. It it drove me crazy and it didn't make any sense. I know that R.B. Lemberg can write. I know that they can write a good story. And um, they have since written a novel as well, a full-length novel, as it were. So I, I don't understand what happened here. The story itself, at its heart, was fine, but despite the length and probably due to all the repetition, there just did not seem to be a lot of actual substance in the scenes. Even when, you know, death is at hand and all of these big important things going on. It just fell kind of flat for me. And that's a shame, really. I'm not sure when I will be reading their novel, but um, hopefully it's better. <laughs> and I also, in October, finally went through Way of the Waters Going, Images of the Northern California Coastal Range. This is a book of photographs by Ernest Waugh and Alan Nicholson, with accompanying text from Ursula K. Le Guin's work of fiction, Always Coming Home. I read Always Coming Home earlier this year and was pretty impressed by it. Um... I got this book as a 
as a free book from Thrift Books. And I probably would not have gotten it otherwise. But having read Always Coming Home recently, I really enjoyed this. It was nice to revisit the text. And it was nice to see the landscape that, um, that the book was set in. And the photographs themselves I really like, especially these high contrast ones. Um, I've never been to California, so this was a fun journey. I really enjoyed that. And I definitely will not be reading nearly as much in November. But I have long surpassed my goal for the year, which was to read 100 books. I think at this point I've read, including comics and things like that, um, 130 books or so. And I care about that only because I've had, I have so many unread books laying around. I really think I have made a serious dent in them all this year. Um, I think I am at least somewhat keeping pace between my reading and the books I'm buying. So the impact on my unread stacks is not visible, but, um, I do feel I'm getting somewhere with the backlog. The remaining problem is now that I have nowhere to put all these books that I have recently read. Since I I don't shelve books until I've read them, now having read these, I don't have enough shelves. Um, sometime next year I'll have to figure that out.